Hello, Scott. Hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm always rosy cheeked. I was eating some brewer's yeast and telling you about it. Not brewer's yeast, like it's not really brewer's yeast. It's um, nutritional yeast grown on black strap, strap molasses generally. But it has a much higher content of all the amino acids, B complex, and other things in high doses, even those your body can't make than animal or meat or seafood. And it's more easily digestible and it tastes great. But I don't promote this product. That's not my purpose. I'm just saying people can research and find of a nutritional brewer's yeast and what its benefits are if they're trying to get away from doing what all their fellow beings on earth are doing in unconscious blank, you know, they don't remember. So they're busy doing things to insult nature, torture animals without thought or regard, and they're all busy consuming and doing things which aren't necessarily good for them or the planet. That's most of the people I see wherever I go every day. I can't talk to them or tell them anything. Some of these people were so committed to their misdirection, they would fight you to the death to protect it. Whether it's religion or something else, and they don't realize how unconscious that's making them. They don't know or they wouldn't do it. Ah, I suppose it's because people on earth, when they think of themselves as being normal human beings, and they look at all their fellows doing the same thing, they think this must be what life is like in other worlds. This is normal. It is not normal. It's not like life on other worlds, human life as well. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of space bearing races that are human and humanoid that people on earth have been deprived knowing because of a worldwide classified system that was agreed to be put in place after World War II on this planet. And it's coming to an end. Because there are forces and energies and beings nice moving through the universe now that aren't going to tolerate this planet and its people going out into space the way they are. Too destructive, too neurotic, too psychotic. And they don't even remember how they got to be on Earth or where they came from before they were born here. And most people think that's normal. And it isn't. Human beings should know what they are that is not a physical body. Yeah. They should. It's a spherical energy shaped like a sun or a planet or a moon. It's a structure to it. It has energy and consciousness. It can move from one lifetime to another, even one dimension to another. What people on earth call soul without knowing what it is or what it looks like or what to do with it. They think they can't know that till they die. Tyrants who controlled priestcraft in the history of this world created that to keep people stuck. So they wouldn't know anything until they die. And then they die and take their fear of the future and fear of death with them. And that simply motivates them to recreate a false security, to come back in a body, forget everything and not know a thing, and do it over again and over again and over again. That's not normal either. A human being like me or yourself are meant to be conscious, trustworthy co-creators with the source behind and supporting all life. That is our true purpose as a living being. That's actually it. People are looking for the answer to the mystery of life. But they don't dare think that we're supposed to co-create with the source, what they call the supreme being. They don't know what it is. They think it's some guy up there or some woman or something in some big throne dictating things. Thou shalt worship me or I shall smite you and send you to some demonic place. People think this way. Tyrants love them thinking like that because it's not the truth. The source itself, when you have the opportunity to go to it, as I do all the time, I don't mind stating it publicly. Why not? It's normal. The beings I work with from other worlds do this all the time and travel in spaceships across the stars. It's normal. I'm here on this planet to initiate the recovery of this world from what was done to it through the misuse of advanced extraterrestrial technology. Because it's underway off this planet and it's heading this way. 
and it's for the benefit of all life on this world. I don't care if they're royal families or political people or classified people or the rest of the mass of people. Plants and animals and minerals and trees and skies and air, stars and space and the moon, it's all involved in it. And it's moving one way. It is not reversible and it cannot be controlled or manipulated by any negative being or power or technology. People in control on this planet now know this. They know it's out in our solar system, it's classified. They've been very frightened about it because they thought that there would be retribution and these beings would come and put them up against the wall and shoot them for all the dishonest things they've done. This is not the case because they were compelled to do it against their better judgment and free will through a technology they could not have seen coming. The beings that used it on them broke an off world treaty doing it and it was policed and craft were shot down but not by the militaries of this planet. I wanna make that perfectly clear. We've never been alone in the universe. Our human beings did not originate on this planet ever. Every single race on this planet, whether they're Asian or African-American or Caucasian or Semitic or Eskimo or Aboriginal or South American Indian tribes or anything else, and most mammalian and plant life did not originate on this planet to begin with. It was imported here over a history that stretches back 65 million years after the dinosaurs were made extinct on this planet. And they didn't originate here either. This planet could cultivate life and sustain it. Beings colonized this place under treaty, off world tyrant, royal family bloodlines, and benevolent races who came up with a treaty after a great war in this galaxy half a million years ago. And it's been policed ever since. There has not been a war out there in the universe since, as some people are claiming, or we'd all be dead here on this planet. That's for sure. Tyrants would come here and waste everybody and take all the resources or make slaves out of who they didn't kill. That, as everybody knows, is not going to happen. It hasn't happened. It will not happen. I have to be very succinct about this and clear, or I'm not doing the reason I came to this planet. It is for the benefit of all life here, and it is not a threat to anyone. That's why when beings in the classified military industrial complex anywhere on this earth, find things and ships and people that are doing things they can't control or prevent, and yet they're not being threatened when they try to attack them and can't do any harm, eventually they begin to get the idea that whatever is underway is not meant to harm them. It's meant to set them free from subconscious drives that are negative-based, that misdirect their thinking and what they choose to do with this world. It's all backwards. Backwards. My work is about full disclosure to the populace of this planet. And that is underway for the benefit of people who are scared to disclose it. It's not the populace on the planet that would riot in the streets anymore. They've been very well conditioned about extraterrestrials and TV and movies and everything since World War II, since after it. It's not them. It's the people in control that are afraid to disclose. They fear what will be done to them by the people. This is never going to be a problem because the people are gradually being awakened along with them when they're out of their bodies at night in the trance state people on earth call sleep. There's nobody home. It's a breathing body run on automatic and they leave. They've got no training on this planet. Even the elected or unelected leaders grew up without any training about this fact of who they are as a being, an energy that is not made of nuclear matter that governs nuclear matter. And they need to remember this. They need to remember it in order to make better decisions about their own world. Kind beings from other worlds don't wanna run this planet. They want people to wake up and run it in a kind, benevolent way and be respected by the populace for putting them in political positions, trustworthy, so that we can be invited and be given the technology to play among the stars, cures for disease, all that stuff. But more importantly, that people realize and awaken to the fact they have never been a physical body. 
They are a spherical being that runs the DNA that makes up these bodies, which were developed a long time ago in order to handle higher faculties that the atma or soul can carry and understand, working it through the brain and body a person grew up with here. On other worlds, they grew up from birth understanding this, so they have no problem or difficulty with it as adults. Now, when I say people on Earth, I mean all the people of Earth, royal families, classified military industrial complex people, generals, military people who have wives and kids and care about things, who have to lie to everybody every day because it's classified and they don't feel good about it and it's not healthy for them and it causes disease and they die and pass on their knowledge secretly to others. It's not a good system. It was never meant to be permanent when uh, Truman created the National Security Act in this country to classify and shut it all up about extraterrestrials. It was never meant to be permanent. They're just caught in a bad habit. They don't know how to get off it. So they are beginning to get the assistance they need to safely disclose to the populace of this planet the whole thing without destruction or harm. Because this is the way this is being done now. It's decided amongst billions of billions of other beings on massive numbers of worlds and from different dimensional realities. The few people on this earth that exist here that are unconscious, want to blow this place up, are not going to get their way. They already know that too, because it's already been prevented a number of times. That too is classified. When it becomes public knowledge, people will go, yeah, we knew extraterrestrials existed. Thanks for telling us, you jerks, you know. So what? Now, what are you going to do with it as a populace of a whole planet that knows extraterrestrials exist? You're going to just be carry the old ball and chain and status quo just like it is now? Same kind of lawyers lying to everybody in politics? No. Because none of them will want to do it anymore, if you catch my drift. They won't want to do it. People that are trained for this purpose, to liberate a planet in a way, for Earth's, in Earth's case, that has never been done before in the history of the galaxy, in the way it's being done. Know what they're doing. They are not tyrants. They have jurisdiction over the majority of this entire galaxy now. Few tyrant races, and they're all being worked with to free them from the subconscious terror that makes them the tyrants they are. And that goes back in galactic history when it was done to them. It's not unknown. They know exactly how it happened. They're becoming aware now, for the first time, where many beings they used to have close associations with, who lived on other worlds, who were captured and tortured, killed, stuffed in bodies on this earth. They know where they are now. Liberate the people of this planet, and you have great creative potential adding into the mix for the whole multi-dimensional creation and that's what they're interested in now recovering the people of earth because none of them really know who they are how they got to be here do they they don't remember their other lives they don't remember what they were what they are that's not physical they look in the mirror and say i'm this and i got a soul over here somewhere i guess you can pull it up look at it once long. you get it all backwards backwards they are this running one of these that's the truth of it. Down deep, people understand this. They carry the wisdom of it in this spherical form. They don't remember they are. And it's like that poster you have over there, if you'd bring it forward. I very much appreciate that people can understand and see this because once they know it, I don't care who they are or what religion they're in or what politics, Military industrial complex. This is who they are. Period. That's it. It has a white core. It's made of energy. It's not nuclear. It's not atoms or electrons. And it goes through the spectrum of light as people understand it to a kind of a yellow layer, then an orange, then a red, then a green, then a blue, then a violet, then a lavender, then a gold energy around it floats around. And all those little teardrops are higher faculties on different levels that you carry through eternity from the beginning 
before the lower worlds were even created. That thing has no age in terms of time and space. Neither does Perry or myself or any one of you. You wake that up, everything changes in physical matter. You still have wives and kids and everything else, but you know who you are and who you're talking to and who you're inviting to be born in a body here. Births are different. Growth rates are different on planets that are normal. The DNA works differently. The human beings I work with, I know from countless world systems, have four strands of DNA. People on Earth have two. And the genomes that make up the twin strand of DNA of people on Earth, some of those genomes have been turned off. They are switches. Oh, here's one. Thou shalt live 80 to 100 years and then get old like a prune and die. This is true for many, most people on earth. Then if you take that switch and you know the science of it, which races do, that are human too, and you turn it to here, thou shalt live 1,000 years and not grow old at all. The genetic code will follow that to the letter. Even on earth today, scientists know that there are over a billion genomes on the twin strand of DNA. They used to think a lot of it that didn't appear to be working or why six to 10% of a fully mature 100% brain doesn't work or you don't use it. They know, they thought it was junk DNA from evolution that just wasn't working anymore. This was wrong in every way. Then they begin to discover that it's DNA that's just been turned off. They know that on earth right now and still classify it. They just don't know how to work with all those billion genomes and turn them off and on because they don't have the frequencies or the technology. But races out there do and have had it for millions, hundreds of millions of years. It's old science to them. They tried to offer this to the people of this planet and several presidents after World War II and were turned down in favor of making treaties with tyrant ETs that would give us old technology of theirs that didn't require we give up our nuclear arms and radioactive materials, which nobody in their right consciousness outside of this earth would ever use, ever even think about doing it. They don't use energy to get around the universe that's radioactive. What did he just say? Well, they don't use radioactive warp drives to get around star systems. It's illegal. It's destructive. You can't get enough energy to warp drive anywhere that way. You'll never be able to. Okay. That being stated, there are people on this world in science who know what I'm sharing with them is true. And they're classified. And they probably wish they could talk about it with their peers. Well, I'm here simply to state that there's what is underway now will make it possible for them to do just that. That whole deal about good and bad and evil and good. Let's fight the bad guys and become bad guys. And then later some good guys will defeat us. And let's go back and forth like a yo-yo for another billion years, accomplishing nothing. That's an old way the universe ran. It's changing. It's changing in dimensions above this physical reality. And it's going to change here because that's already been ordered, so to speak. The mechanics of the universe called silent mentors that run creation, maintain planets and galaxies and got interdimensional doorways, they're moving in a new direction now. You cannot fight with one of them. They aren't even material beings and they have command of creation. I tell you, it'd be great to be friends with them instead of think of them as enemies because they're not underway to destroy people on this earth. They've done this before when they made this whole polar flip thing happen. Actually, they didn't create that. They just didn't interfere with stopping it. Beings created that in our solar system, that imbalance. Through wrong thinking, through fear, through not interference. You know, by not intervening when they should have, they've been bitten the ass ever since, the good galactic races, because of what happened in our solar system. Everything is connected. All beings are connected telepathically on all levels in the grand multidimensional creation. You cannot get away from this fact. 
if we want to play in the lower dimensions of time and space on worlds and planets and in bodies in a way that will change the way the universe runs, how it's administered, then we have to do our part collectively as atmos to co-create it in a new direction with vast hosts of beings that are underway doing that now. This is what the people of Earth are being asked to do, to become co-creators with all that for their own benefit. You want to play among the stars and go on a field trip to Norexalum? This planet and its people are ready to do that. They just don't know it. The technology is not sold on the intergalactic market for rubles or dollars. That's not how they work. Cures for cancer and all that, and getting rid of microscopic life that no longer is a benefit and just gets in the way. They got rid of all that a long time ago. They know how to do it. They're not tyrants. They're going to force this on people on Earth, but they will give it to us for free at no charge. And their technicians show us how they work and give us ships and let us play in the stars as long as we can be trusted with it. Duh. You know, duh. Yeah, wouldn't you if you were them? You're going to let a bunch of people from different countries squabbling go out in space and then take all that crap out there and try to put it all on everybody else? Huh? No. That's why this solar system and Earth are quarantined by them. The tyrants aren't here anymore. The reptilians are gone. Nobody's being abducted by little greys anywhere on this planet and haven't been for more than 20 years. When are people going to come up to present time and understand this? That threat, those threats have been eliminated. Now you've got a whole planet of people subconsciously misdirected with fear-based programs they didn't even know they have running around making decisions for all life in this world, backwards. The problem isn't bad ETs, it's the people and the programming they need to have undone here that's important now. So they'll make good decisions for themselves and all life like they should be, like they have a right to be, like that's what should be being done now on this planet. You want to go play among the stars, you're never going to get there in a a SpaceX rocket or a NASA rocket or a Russian Soyuz rocket, you're never going to get out to other planets and big old gas powered giant controlled explosive devices like that. They're cumbersome and awkward. They don't go very fast. How are you going to get around the solar system in one of those? It doesn't work. You got to have anti gravitic technology that uses zero point module and free energy in the universe and pass it through your device without polluting or burning a damn thing if you want to get around the universe because there are beings out there won't tolerate us going out there polluting everything that way just because we want to do it to our own world no and if i was in their shoes and i am i wouldn't tolerate it either neither would any person on this planet once they're awake as to what they are and who they are they would not tolerate it either. When pe the vibration raises on this planet collectively, when people are helped when they're out of their bodies at night by kind beings to get rid of that subconscious junk, in the daytime when they wake up one day, they'll all make a decision collectively. Governments, people, everyone. Even the animals and plant life, the ground itself. There's a consciousness that will change in a new direction and invite these beings to come here and help fix this broken backward planet, polluted to the point where it will self-destruct. You don't even do nuclear war to do that anymore. Global warming will do that. Just fill the upper atmosphere with the CO2, the infrared cannot escape, and you got an ice age coming your way eventually. Now, nobody can tell me that that's not man-made. Well, of course it is. The planet doesn't destroy itself because it thinks it's cool. People do. Misdirected human beings making decisions based on subconscious drives and their fear that do that. Always and every time on any world, period. And the past beings have stood by in great numbers and done nothing and let planets go up in smoke thinking non-interference was the best thing. But let's put it this way. If you know there's a whole planet of people on, a, on a, like Earth 
whole planet of people don't even remember who they are and think they're a body. And they're making decisions and they want to go out and play in space. And you know that, and you're from other worlds, and you do nothing about it. And you know those people do not have free will like they think they do because they don't remember who they are to have free will, to make good decisions. Then you're at fault because everything's connected. They know that now. That's why they're beginning to intervene here. Not to control the planet or one government, it's to get people to wake up and be mature as beings and run it right. So they can go play in the stars with everybody else. That's the simple truth of it. That's the big uh, covert, ooh, fear of aliens thing. When people on this planet discover how vast the life is out there and how advanced, human I'm speaking as well, and others, they're going to be so blown away that these beings would want to share it with us. Why would they want to do that? Let's, let's answer this question on this show tonight. They would want to do it because us is them. We didn't originate on this world. So what did we know before we were shut down and forced to inhabit bodies here against our will? Hmm? What did we know? You get that back and it's not so easy and it's not so hard to simply take the next step with vast hosts of beings who don't use money, don't charge for what they do. They don't barter. They share what they learn for the good of all life on all those worlds collectively. People grow up on those worlds with... When they're 10, on their excellent, by the time they're 10, a child 10 years old has the equivalency of 10 PhDs to a person on this planet because they have photographic memories. They use 100% of 100% of the brain they have, not six to 10. They're telepathic like they're meant to be, which is the being running the body that's telepathic, not the brain, not the pineal gland, not the third eye is not in the skull. It's the white core of the being running the body that's the third eye and third ear that sees into the grand multidimensional universe and knows things because it can plug directly into the current. There is an energy field that supports and sustains the entire multidimensional creation and it floats in it. And that energy, like the God particle they named in the CERN super collider, the large hydrogen collider in CERN, Switzerland, because they detected it, does not observe the laws of physics like they thought it should. It's not nuclear. It's not an atom or a proton or an electron or a neutron. It's behind everything. They're starting to get it. People call that divine spirit and worship to it, pray to it to get things. That's not its nature. It is a co-creative living force from the source behind all life, where we come from and have forgotten all that. And we're meant to co-create with that source energy. Wonderful new ways of doing things that's going to be of an uplifting benefit for, for all life. That's our true function and purpose as an atma, as a soul, as a human being. Hugh man or Hugh woman or Hugh child. Hugh is the first half of the word human, hidden in plain sight. It did not originate on this planet. It cannot be owned or c controlled or copyrighted by any organization, religion, or government. It didn't originate in the lower dimensions of time and space. There's a new ray of energy of consciousness moving through it now from the upper worlds to the, the void, what people call a void, down through those parallel dimensions and dimensions of time and space that's moving in only one direction now. And it has command over the positive and negative streams that have been separated in the consciousness of beings to fight each other, good versus bad and all that. It's just energy being misdirected, misfocused. This energy comes around and gets them to do this. And then comes through it and creates things without karma, without cause and effect, even in the physical universe. How do you override the law of physics? Every reaction creates an equal but opposite reaction in time space. You put out anger and fear of the future. This omnipresent force, this divine spirit pray to will create that and bring it back to you. And if you put out good and wonderful things for your family and friends, it will create that and bring that back to you. It's a teacher. Both at once, which is what people on earth are doing without realizing it, oppose each other and they neutralize each other. The energy gets grounded in the earth and they stay unconscious here because they're not using their creative 
awareness properly. The correct utilization of the creative imagination, which is not made up in the brain, it's created from the sphere that runs the DNA and brain and physical body you grew up with, that knows all those other lives and other places. It's just suppressed. It's un unconscious. People are terrified to recover it because they think that somebody will eat them or kill them alive, some tyrant. Stick them in a body earth and tell them, if you ever wake this up, we're going to do this to you again. That's a negative program. It's no longer true. They aren't in a position to do that to anyone ever again. That's already a done deal off this planet. I'm the only one, first one on this planet, telling people this for the first time, because that's why I came here. I don't have any other reason for being here, really, than to help ground this change, unexpected as it is. The past prophesied Armageddon destruction of the world, going to some heaven thing, is dead and gone and over because the energy beyond this worth has already changed it into a new unexpected uplifting destiny the experiment of evil as people think of it is the way positive and negative energy runs in the lower dimensions the way people have misused it in ignorance or fear and it's being retired like the dinosaur for the first time not only in the upper worlds is the consciousness changed, the source itself, but it's changing the beings that run the lower dimensions as well. It's being replaced with this new ray and this omnipresent hue, this divine spirit. I don't like using that word. It's been misused too much. This conscious living force we live in, we as individual atoms are comprised of exactly the same energy, non-nuclear, but from a much higher dimension of it. And we've been brought down into these worlds, taken over bodies, run DNA that's capable of handling higher faculties through it, and then gotten lost in it or corrupted by it or trapped by tyrants or time and space until we don't remember any of it anymore and are afraid to. Right now, the energy coming into this planet is making it possible for people for the first time to safely explore recovering who they are no matter what else is going on on this planet, safely. They cannot be threatened by power, satellites, hidden government, classified men in black, any of it, because the hue moving through in this direction now cannot be coerced or controlled or dominated or misdirected by anyone or anything. And it's moving in one direction for the benefit of all life here. Now that that is said, and made very plain. Was that plain for you, Perry? Clear. Perry has her mic off simply because we get a better recording quality. If you want to turn on for a minute, say hi, then people know you're still there. You're the host, and I'm just the guest. <laughs> yeah. Hi. There's a lot to get done in a short period of time for your benefit. <laughs> There's no money involved in what I do in these radio shows for your benefit. Don't charge money for it. There's no charge for watching videos or hearing music at my websites. Or There are links to trustworthy online retailers if you think they're trustworthy, but to the degree they can be. Uh, to get the books that I've published or the CD, which is music, music for film themes really, because I'm a, not only a book writer, but a screenwriter. And much of my work is heading towards Hollywood for very well planned out for decades and decades. When people explore this material, they're going to find that it's designed from off world to be kind of like interdimensional consciousness of raising doorways. Through which comes this sound of this hue from off world. A certain protective energy comes with it. And then people can start to make actual progress. Once they stop throwing barbs and negativity and fear of the future out at everybody, they relax. Once they relax, the higher faculties in their being, the real them begin to turn on. And then the brain and the awareness changes. This is important because people on earth are atmas, souls energy beings of a type that are not nuclear, that run nuclear bodies and nuclear matter. And they've long been made to forget this or fear it. 
we are meant to be conscious, fully trustworthy co-creators with the source behind all life. We are made of exactly the same energy on a smaller scale, like a drop of pure water in a mighty ocean of that same energy. We are actually that. The sooner people on Earth recover that, the better off this planet will be. And the more fun people will have. Can you imagine using 100% of your brain and knowing it instead of 6 to 10% what you would be like? But would you be like to be able to talk to someone and if you a free will choose to, you can telepathically communicate to each other. Kind of mind to mind and hear it clearer and with perfect understanding without distortion. What would it be like to have DNA altered on this planet so that you can live 3,000 years as other beings in other worlds do? People would not indiscriminately have too many children on the world to overpopulate their planet simply because they would know better. They would know who they are and who the beings are they're bringing in and why. The decision making between races from other worlds and us here would change for the better in every imaginable way. If people operate without fear of the future, what would it be like on Earth? Hmm. Hmm. What would that be like? People on Earth don't know, but somewhere in the back of their consciousness, as Atmos, they're beginning to understand something that's underway now that was unexpected is changing things. And the more they are awake, the more they're going to see it and co create with it intentionally. Then they're going to be participants in this change, not idle pacifist effect of everybody else. They participate in it. That's fun. So I would say people, if we're gonna go on a little journey to show you how this works, I will do this because it's important that I do, or none of you will have the ability to find out what my work's about. This book has been published. It's now published through my publishing company. It was originally published through New York Publisher. Now, because I want to get this out in its pure form, these covers were redone. This is a six by nine book now. It was once smaller. This on the front is a mile long cylindrical shaped emerald star cruiser from the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds located on a world system near the galactic core of our Milky Way galaxy. These are scout class ships, very advanced, three semi-spheric pods, blue auras around them, which are antigravitic light fields. This ship is a control room on the front. It has one on the back that's identical. It's designed to go through interdimensional doorways beyond space and time, faster than the speed of light, pollutes nothing, and creates no exhaust. It is not radioactive. It is hovering, protected in the ice rings that make up Saturn's rings in our solar system. This book is about what extraterrestrials recently went through in consciousness change to motivate them collectively to be aware of beings they long lost that now are inhabiting bodies with no memory on Earth. That's part of it. They have to be motivated to want to deal with this place because nobody wants to come here, not voluntarily. About that, The Emerald Doorway is book one of the Parallel Time Trilogy. And if you look at it, you can see a human male, Caucasian, a blue-skinned female. They are romantically interested. This is 100,000 years ago. Blue skin, little webs between her hands, big shiny black hair. This is a master teacher named Ramu. He's carrying a crystal quartz staff with the Ankh, what became in Egypt history, the life symbol for eternal life. It's a device. And this is a little creature called a Dren. And there are 30 illustrations in this book that are very distinct like this. So it'll help you go through the story about your own planet. This creature evolved on a world where she comes from, third parallel dimension up from the physical universe that you probably don't understand yet, on a planet that's mostly water covered. And the Oceanan race, her father, 
was one of the beings that was the founding co-sponsor or sponsor of the entire galactic interdimensional line free worlds a very long time ago in galactic history. These are anti-gravitic disks they're hovering on that have a blue of magnetic field, grounds them to them so they can literally fly through the upside down or chase each other on these little devices. And he has brought them out here to meet this. This is a doorway into the fifth realm above what people in certain esoteric groups on Earth call the void. It's the first of the higher worlds. It is not made of positive and negative energy like the lower worlds. It's made of pure positive energy. And this being, you could say, represents the source behind all life. This is Caleb's ship up here, hovering stationary. After the poles flipped 100,000 years ago and destroyed Lemuria and most of Atlantis, which was a continent two-thirds its size, centered over the equator on the opposite side of the planet, it created the rise of, of land masses from the sea floor to counterbalance this. A very destructive event happened virtually overnight. Then you have your ice age and such. Six of them in 600,000 years, by the way. This, what it looks like, is actually one hovering above each of their heads, including this Dren who's silica-based, not carbon-based. He has a photographic memory. He's telepathic. He has a wife and kids. He has little dexterous hands and feet like a human, but he is not from Earth and he is not human. He is more courageous and dedicated to his wife and family than people on Earth understand. And he isn't human. There's a lot people have to remember on this planet before they can go out and play among the stars. It's essential. Here's what he looks like. See if I can get this book. There you can see him. Big bulbous blue eyes, hands and feet like a human. He can walk in all fours. His tail glows like crystal opal in bright sunlight. He's silica based, not carbon. His species evolved with the ability to defy gravity and fly through the air. One of the reasons anti-gravitic pulse waves were discovered because of an organic creature. Isn't that interesting? And not on Earth. It's one of the ways it was discovered, not the only one. So this polar flip thing that's happened to this planet, everybody talks about, you know, gold mace, iron age and back, is done for this planet. It's over forever. There will not be another polar flip to this planet because the beings I work with called silent mentors who are the mechanics of creation have put an end to it. So that this planet can take its place finally among the stars with others and beings who once knew who they were can remember that. So if you want to get those books, you can go to my website at paralleltime.com or three others. You'll be directed with links to get the books at like a Barnes and Noble or Amazon or iTunes because it's the only way I can get the, these doorways into anybody's hands on this planet. I can't just print them and ship them out over the world myself. I've got too much to do. So these radio shows, there's never any charge for them. There's no money involved. I do private group sessions to help people recover. There's no money involved. The books, yes. It's really quite the only way I could possibly get this in enough people's hands. They are kind of a, a, um, a conduit for the hue. The hue, the first half of the word human. When you sing it out or chant it out or say it, you're actually connecting telepathically to the source behind all life directly. Through and with the help of beings on many dimensional levels who know and understand this, particularly on other world systems in the Milky Way galaxy and others. It opens a doorway through the pineal gland in the center of the human brain so that the atma can begin to bring back to this physical conscious that never grew up with any of this training, what it once knew in other worlds, in other realms, in other realities, has the Atma, what people on Earth call soul, a real, actual energy being. None of us have ever really been a physical body on any planet, but many people, most people on Earth believe that's what they are. They haven't had any reason to compare it to anything else and not taught anything else growing up here. So why would they? That is changing. And it must change. 
I would ask you to sit in a chair or lay down on a bed and imagine someone you love and respect and you're grateful they're in your life, person, place, or thing. But when you do it, it makes you smile or warm inside. All you're doing, all you're doing here is putting the body in the trance state we from other worlds call sleep. It just means every night all of you are experts at knowing how to do this without effort, but you don't know consciously what it is you're doing to pull it off. Bodies and brains and nervous systems do not run themselves. The spherical being has to animate the form or it sits there and drools or falls over and dies. And this is true of animals as well. They do not motivate their own nervous system. Understand this. Start to get it now. You're going to have to anyway. I send this statement out because it was constructed in words, in human language, in a very specific order and in a very specific way, and not just by me on this planet. Every time you say a word, it has a corresponding holographic three-dimensional image picture associated with it. That's telepathy. Here's what I send out, and I'm going to do it right now before I start doing this work with all of you. I send out in the hue, you. See, I understand what that's connecting me to. Fully aware of what it's doing. As you all should be. When I do that, I send this out into it. Safely show me deliberately hidden truth on a grand multi-dimensional scale. And the much greater knowing of the expansive love within it. Later, when Perry puts this show up on her YouTube channel and you can review it, play it back when you will not be disturbed. And go on this journey again. You will contemplate on the depth of the meaning of the construction of those words, what it is that it's imagining and telling this omnipresent force, what to go do with itself to co-create with us. Safely show me deliberately hidden truth on a grand multi-dimensional scale so that you include all of it. And the much greater knowing of the expansive love within it, that's supporting and sustaining all life, even good and evil. The source itself is not a tyrant. The source itself from which we come never asked or requested or encouraged us to worship it. Our job is not to do that, it's to respect it and each other and all life in the grand multidimensional creation. That's our purpose. Putting anything on a pedestal to be worshiped is like trying to placate God to get favors. It's selfish and it's wrong. The most pure prayer would be to send the hue out, meaning goodwill for all life, not just life on planet Earth. That won't work. Because when you do it that way, you're telling this source to help wake you up to understand what all life is in the multidimensional creation again. It is our job to one day return to that source far above the void and download into it new ways of doing things that we've figured out and discovered in our long journeys and lifetimes in the lower worlds, running bodies. Duh. That is it. I'm not being insulting. I'm just telling you, sharing with you telepathically the truth. That is what we're meant to do. And that is our destiny. Not Armageddon or any other nonsense. Anybody can blow up a planet. Big deal. What does it make you proud of yourself? You think you're going to go to some heaven and the supreme means going to say, oh, good job? Give me a break, please. Tyrants off-world and in our history, in recent history, when you've been taught in school, 
have controlled priestcraft on this planet in no uncertain terms or kill them to do what they do to get people to worship yes what they call a supreme being but it's really to get them to worship the tyrants themselves and if you don't bolt of lightning gets sent up your keister or through the top of your head or you get burned or sent somewhere bad so to speak this is all wrong there's nothing right about it in any way shape or form faith is a great place to start out but a terrible place to end up simply because there's no experience or knowing as a being as a soul in any of that it's better to know what you are and who you are and be able to leave that body as an atma which you do every night anyway long before your physical body ceases what does it do when you do that fear of death bye bye fear of present and the future so long no thank you and what happens to the consciousness then running that body it begins to do what it was meant to do of course with beings who are already doing it who are not from this world did not grow up here who do not have subconscious minds through which they can be manipulated pretty clear when it said to you right to the center of your being on a radio show this is done for the benefit of all life on this planet no one is accepted exempt from this you can't be any other done any other way if you want to go play among the stars in your lifetime or any lifetime i'm going to send out these tones now on a number of different higher levels so that your body can be assisted to go into the trance state called sleep it means you the being not me will make the pineal gland secrete serotonin make melatonin and put the body in automatic these substances make the body run with the heart and the lungs breathing blood circulating when no one's home the eyes are closed the brain is off there's no light coming into the eyes when you start imagining what i'm sharing with you understand this you the spherical being running that body that's now in sleep state is what's seeing imagination what it's doing is looking into the grand multi-dimensional universe and perceiving things again like it's meant to and knowing things again doubt fear speculation theory anger revenge all these other things are all artificially created negative emotional programs put in an artificially created subconscious mind by tyrants long before you found yourself on earth with no memory this needs to be neutralized reversed done away with i will begin these tones now that will help put your physical body in this state more and the bodies you're running in other planes you don't even remember you're running as a single atma, spherical being so that you can withdraw from the body it's safe and go on this journey for your benefit here we go. You 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 
Hiu. 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 You All your fear of the future, whatever that may be, is now turned off, tied to the physical body you grew up with in brain that you are not. You are the spherical energy being, now, the body in the trance state called sleep that you easily put it in every night without really realizing where you go or what you do. When you return in the morning and wake that body up, this is what the mystery of sleep is. Put the body in a sleep state to get recharged. You go out and explore the multiverse to discover how to create new ways of doing things for the benefit of all life. This is our primary purpose. Be above your body by the ceiling as a sphere of energy with a white core looking down on that body in the sleep state, being kind to it. You realize that it's part of you. It's an extension of who you are. It has DNA and runs at 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit, kind of like a biological machine. The being, the atma, controls or runs the body through the pineal gland in the center of the human brain. It is a control center. There are rods and cones in it like you have in physical eyes, in a liquid. It has one vein in and one vein out, the strongest blood flow for its size of anywhere in the body. and those rods and cones, in physical eyes, that are made to detect a small band of light frequency that you see when you look out of your eyes. These rods and cones are made to detect frequencies beyond the capability of physical eyes into the other spectrum, into ultraviolet, infrared, and x ray, and gamma rays, and up into other things people don't even name yet that don't function relative to the speed of physical visible light. Understand this. The energy that beings travel on or get across the galaxy is not in the frequency of known visible physical light. You find yourself suddenly in space in orbit above planet Earth. Yeah, you can do this. You do it every night. You can go to other planets, the astral plane, and find yourself flying free in a body, some people. Coming back with people chasing them, come back to Earth and go, gee, what was that all about? Wow. They don't know. Then they forget about it and go about their day. This is what people do every night all over the world. Talk about being suppressed and frustrated. No wonder some people go postal. Tiny fraction can't handle it, just go nuts. Because it's not normal or natural. 
It's a suppressed state of an atler running a body that no longer remembers what it is or what it's supposed to go do with itself. This too is not a natural state for any world system. In space, you don't need to breathe oxygen. It's like the space shell, you're up there, but you are energy that is not nuclear. You don't need to breathe. You don't feel heat and cold. You don't experience radiation effects from the sun. And when you look out from your eye, your third eye, your inner eye, the sphere at the center of your being, you see that space is not black as it looks in time-lapse photography from the Hubble telescope of billions of galaxies and all the colors you see in them. The brilliant colors of them are not even in the physical spectrum. Apparatus and devices can capture that beyond the range of visual sight. The beings look at a photograph of it and it appears black. Even scientists on Earth today know that that black is not black and it's packed full of what they call dark matter, only because their eyes see it as dark. But the atmosphere sees it as a white light with a golden essence, filling the void of space between the Earth and its polar ice caps you see there below you, and the moon with its pockmarked crater surface with no atmosphere that does not turn on its axis as it revolves around planet Earth. You can see the continents you're familiar with and the beautiful oceans. From this distance, you don't see walls and fences between countries. You see polar ice caps and a moon that's barren circling it, off in the distance of the sun, and a white field of energy. And in it, you can see billions of stars twinkling all through space, above you, below you, out in the distance, past the planets in our solar system. And you are comprised, the core of your being, on a much higher vibratory level of the energy that you see supporting all this floating stuff like galaxies and planets and moons that are round. They are spherical because they were created after beings who made them, namely the Atma, the spherical being collectively making up the source behind all life. And it's much bigger than the sum of its parts. You could go there and speak with it, but it isn't some kind of a soul or Atma or tyrant demanding worship. It is a place where we communicate to assist it to co-create better ways of creating the lower dimensions of time and space. They were meant to become mirrors of the upper worlds. That is a failed experiment. This thing we call evil and good got in the way of that one. And everybody knows that. So it's being retired. In the past, the entire lower dimensions and all planets like Earth were wiped out. An atom was drawn up into the, across the void into the upper worlds. Everything rebuilt and they were sent back to try to do it again. It's been done a number of times and the same problem exists. It hasn't changed anything. What is underway now is designed to change it for the first time. So the lower dimensions of time and space can become mirrors of the upper worlds. So we can play when in them run bodies and create happily, joyfully, those things in a new direction for creation that will be of uplifting benefit only for all life, not just life on earth, all life. To do that, beings on earth running bodies who don't know it, have the capability to understand and know what this source is themselves and how to co-create with it. We have that innate knowing dwelling within us and it needs to be recovered, awakened, illuminated, brought to the surface over and beyond the fear that you will be killed again or eaten alive if you try or attempt to recover this. I'm here as a living example for all of you to know that the threat of that is gone, is no longer there. These radio shows do not get interrupted by satellites being shut off. My internet and stuff does not get harassed by black ops and men in black and a classified military industrial complex ever. No threats, no phone calls. You want to know why? Because I am here for their benefit too. They're beginning to know this. Real disclosure is underway and it cannot be reversed. People on earth might as well get in the swing of it because they're going to have a ball with it. 
be completely transformed, different beings than they ever thought they would be. Begin to remember who they are and how to co-create with others out in the universe, and we will be given the freedom to do so. You can see a friend of mine who is human. His name is Ambassador Torellian of the Say Rays, thus the Say Rays Agenda book. And the Ambassador Torellian comes from a human race that evolved. They have eight-stranded DNA, not two like people on Earth. And they helped to bring into creation because of their higher development in science several billions of years ago, humans in our form not from earth, did not originate here, did not develop here. We do not come from Cro-Magnon or Neanderthal, and they will never find a missing link that is anything other than theory on this planet that will say that we came from them because they are extinct humanoid species. We do not, did not, have not. Say race helped develop races that are bipedal, fingers and toes and arms, human, humanoid, and other races, and mix their own DNA with this to create higher forms through which the Atlet could run bodies to experience planets and places and galaxies and lower dimensions. And once they got them up to spacefaring capability, they vanished. Long time ago. And they did this shortly after they immortalized their physical bodies. They didn't just make them like 36 years old and never age. No, that's a physical body. They dematerialized the energy of the DNA and stored it in one of their teardrops in one of the layers of their spherical being. When they go around creation now, not limited by the speed of light or physics, in this energy that underlies it all, they can manifest an 18 foot tall body like the one you're seeing here standing in space beside the sphere that he is. Luminous, long blonde hair, big bulbous blue eyes, bigger than a human on earth, but beautiful, slightly pointed ears, a tunic like a Greek god. He's standing there giving his thumbs up. He's doing something with his thumbs up. It's not just a gesture. Because they've recently decided to come back into creation and assist beings like people on earth to recover who they are because they're a partially part, they are involved with co-creating the retiring of evil as an experiment, along with many other beings even more evolved than them. And he is here to show you how this works. If you look at him, watch him now, you'll see the body turn silver gold and vanish like a little teardrop and dart up into the white core of his being and plug itself into a place in one of the layers of his being. And then you're going to see it dart back down through the layers out the white core. It's going to co-create with the omnipresent white energy around us and materialize that body standing there in space, not needing to breathe. He could manifest this physical body on a planet and walk up to you and scare the heck out of you, looking up at an 18-foot tall human being. So they don't do that. Earth's not ready for that yet, but he could. He'd go on a mission, carry it out, and then just dematerialize the body. That's real immortalization of a physical form. There are races in our Milky Way galaxy, and one from a galaxy five galaxies away, and from a planet on the other side of our galaxy away from Earth, that have higher genetic science and mastered it, and they have immortalized their bodies in the way where a body remains about 36 and does not age. There are couples I know that are three and a half million years old running the same form, but they are not trapped in them, in them and they know who they are as the Adla. So it's not a prison for them. They too are involved in now in this transformation. Around Torelli, and you're going to see a number of other beings in three concentric rows of spherical illumination extending beyond us. There's Perry, myself, the Atma that runs my little cat body here, Starlight, who left his body easily long before we started this journey and has been hovering in space as a kitty, glowing, next to the Atma that runs him, next to Etta that I showed all of you, 
who's about three feet long from the root of his tail to his cute nose and bulbous eyes. And he's got his tail glowing like crystal opal in sunlight, hovering out in front of the atma that he is to show you. He has a body like this somewhere. There are master teachers from the Galactic Alliance in these three concentric rows of beings, over 2,500 of them. And they're a little further out and they're up here as Atmas, been requested to join us. Many of them are master teachers, men and women who can help you recover who you are when you're safely out of your bodies at night and you, they will come up to you, you'll feel uplifted. They will, you will seem to remember them. They know who you are. And if you request it, and only if you request it, they will assist you to be free of these subconscious fears. And over time, you will wake up in the morning different people, more intelligent, higher IQs, greater capacity of understanding, and things like this. Any of you who are on this journey with Perry and myself, you're going to see a couple carefully approach you, the Atma hovering behind this physical form that looks to be about 36, perfectly healthy, radiantly dressed, smiling kindly, and they will introduce themselves to each one of you. Two of them, I can tell you their names. One is Sean Tial, his spouse or wife is Tonal Tial. Another one is Don Tiam and another Lam Tiam. They are from an area of space beyond what people call the Seven Sisters. They are human from a planet called Nerexlum, out beyond, further back, amongst thousands of world systems in that part of our Milky Way galaxy. They are part of the Galactic Alliance and they are master teachers. These beings and their fellows are adept experts at removing subconscious secondary and primary implants. The fear-based programs tyrants put into you before destroying, well, before that, they destroyed your bodies. And then put this into you as an energy field around the atma, because they can't destroy or alter or harm an atma, but they can put a field of energy around it through which you see the universe distorted, like an electromagnetic field. And that can be neutralized, and they can help get this done with your permission and co creative cooperation. It's up to you. You will never feel threatened by them. You will never fear fear, feel fear in their presence. They make sure that stays turned off, back on earth, until it can be dealt with properly. Let's go on a little journey, all of us, instead of up in upper dimensions. We'll save that for another time. And let's go to a planet located near the central nexus of the Milky Way galaxy. It's quite a large world, four or five times bigger than Earth. And it's the central governing council area for the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds. Many other smaller alliances exist in the universe within this greater organization. You're going to see Torellian wave a hand. We're still hovering in space above Earth. And then you're going to see space open up. You're going to see a golden violet energy tunnel whirling gently clockwise, and it just opens in front of us. Way off in the distance down this tunnel, you can see a planet that's luminous floating in space. It has a number of planets the size of Earth as moons circling it. There are no polar ice caps on these planets. You... This is a sound. You as the Atma can hear humming through creation. It is the white light making a sound, it has a golden essence to it, and it feels soothing, enlightening, awakening, nurturing, and it's drawing us to go into that tunnel and travel down it far beyond the speed of light 
which we're doing as a group of beings circling around Torellian to keep us focused. And I'm in the center next to him. There are several master teachers here. I've mentioned before, Master Ramu, Master Opelum are not from Earth. And they are very advanced beings that teach the Galactic Alliance, among others. And then we're gonna moving down this blue, this gold violet tunnel that looks like water, but it's luminous, it isn't. And it is created so that we can connect two points in space time across many millions of light years. I mean, many times the speed of physical light. 286,000 miles a second is nothing compared to the other energies in the universe and what we can do with them. You'll find yourself coming out the other end, hovering above a planet. Zetronami is how it's pronounced. This is the central world of the Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds, located near the galactic center of our Milky Way galaxy in the Nova Sam star system. It has a beautiful atmosphere. You will see it as you will see it, so I will not describe it for you here. And as you move down into this atmosphere, you begin to see beautiful botanical gardens, lakes and waterfalls surrounding different types of crystal clear domed cities, pyramid shaped, elongated octagon shapes, and an ocean, kind of a blue violet ocean off into the distance horizon. There is a huge white alabaster type dome hovering over a large area in the center of a city, tall glass-like minaret towers. And when you come and hover above this huge dome, you can see right through it. And we're able to pass down through it, through the top, and you enter into a the size of a soccer stadium, huge indoor spherical chamber. There's a blue circular disc like a, someone, someone would stand on to talk. And then around it are these 15 levels of leather-like leather seats. And you can see 5,000 Galactic Alliance representatives like ambassadors in white gowns with a gold sash from the right shoulder to the lower hip. Human, humanoid, some non-human, bipedal, more like animals, you might say, but beautiful eyes, very intelligent. And they are the Galactic Alliance Council. They represent more than 450 million space-faring races in just one quarter of our Milky Way galaxy. In the last few years, that has doubled. On the central stage, you begin to see a being appear as a blue star, brightly lighting the whole inside of this and the people all stand up. They are reverent or respectful of this being. And then the being manifests into a radiant sphere, an atma, a few more layers than we have and brighter, a little larger. And then it materializes an 18 foot tall, physical human form standing on that blue disc stage. Everybody knows this as Ambassador Terrellian. And you can see me standing on the stage beside him in a physical form that looks like me about 36. And I seem like a shrimp compared to his 18 foot tall height. But both of us have Atmos hovering above those forms. So there's a connection between us. And we are addressing this council. And if you look up above in the atmosphere under the dome, you'll see Perry hovering there, some master teachers and 2,500 additional atmos hovering in three concentric circles. 
Now watch what happens to the atmas hovering there. They move down and hover above the heads of half of the Galactic Alliance Council members. And then they vanish. And those camp council members look up and the atmas reappear. They are the same. These atmas are running these council member bodies. They started this journey with us in the atmosphere above Earth. And they've come here on this journey back to where they came from to have the telepathic experience of how it is that beings like us, so suppressed on a planet, can get out of their bodies and come to this world when they couldn't do it if they had half of the imprint subconscious programming we have. This is a mystery to them. And they are learning co-creatively from us on this journey from Earth, how it's possible to do such a thing and recover against all odds. They are contributing their co-creative energy in encouraging us to go further. Terrellian is giving us two thumbs up. And the next instance, you see a spiral like the eye of a shutter of a camera open in the top of the dome and you can see the blue atmosphere of this planet and then you see a conduit form from the top of this dome running straight up out of blue energy as far as you can see out into space beyond the planet the zitronami and it empties into a place with a beautiful blue atmosphere very far away upward the Galactic Alliance Council members, 2,500, move up above us in three concentric circles. We're in the center. And we all move up through this tunnel at tremendous speed in a blur of light, like a teardrop. And we find ourselves coming out the other end a moment later, hovering as atmos in this same formation around Terrellian, high in the atmosphere of what is called the Hugh Expansion Ray Academy. And you look down below you and that vortex to Zetronomy vanishes all the way down the physical universe. You are now in a realm that was created between the fifth and sixth dimensions above the void known to esoteric groups on earth. Above the first realm of the higher worlds and you are in a place that is designed to assist you to recover how to become a co-creator in wondrous new ways with the source behind all life. It was designed and created for this purpose. Look around you and here's what you'll see. A massive landmass, completely circular with a glowing white beach around the outer circumference. And down in the center, we're hovering above it, six mountain peaks in a hexagon, snow covered. And then you're going to see little white roadways running everywhere in every direction out to those beaches. And off to the left on a lower plateau to what you would call the western direction, north, south, east, and west. You're looking down on it. You see a blue glass administration tower, smooth-sided, transparent, extending out of a 100-foot wide marble floor, white. And it's radiant and glowing. The atmosphere has this deep blue color to it, and it's glowing. And when you look at your own self as the atmosphere, it's glowing. This blue glass tower is glowing. It goes up, forms a flattened sphere, an administration area, and then goes up to a minaret point. And at the base of it, extending just beyond the circle of white marble, are white roadways that go in every direction like spokes from a bicycle tire all the way around this huge landmass. And as they come to the mountain base, they go into tunnels in every direction. They enter a chamber inside this huge mountain complex that's void, it's completely empty, except for a shaft of white light with a golden essence roaring up and down it from the higher worlds through the bottom of this landmass to charge and keep alive and sustain the fifth dimension right below us, uh, through the void, through the lower dimensions of time and space, all the way down to Zetronami and to Earth. And in this void of this energy, on the other side, you can see the tunnels, these caverns, continue. 
and they end at the end of white roadways that completely encompass the circle of this landmass. There is no moon, no stars, no planets. The atmosphere, which is blue, is charged and it's supporting this landmass. You can hear the sound of the hue, and here it sounds like millions of men and women's voices singing the hue in a melodic wonderland, perfect harmony. And it sounds, you can hear all of it, and then it turns into one humming, deep, round sound, vibrating everything here. And if you look at the blue atmosphere where we're floating, you will see that there is a white light with a golden essence just behind it, supporting it. This blue energy is designed so that when you're here, because you can bring no negative nature, negative emotions, or imaginations with you across the void to this realm. That is impossible. Only the real you, the Atma, can come here. And it cannot bring its mental, etheric, emotional, or any other bodies with it. They are in a trance state, perfectly fine, down in the lower planes. And you are traveling in the high worlds, maybe for the first time consciously for many millions of years. Once this process begins, it cannot be reversed. It's for your benefit. When you look out to the western roadway, you can see this white marble road, like all the others. And as it exits this circular flat marble, what do you call it, um, that supports this blue glass tower. There's a turn to the right and it goes into a clearing with a beautiful, they look like weeping willow trees with blue green leaves glowing. And in the middle is this giant four-sided gold-sided pyramid with a quartz cow, crack cap. And you can see inside the walls and inside you find a chamber bigger than a, say a, a soccer stadium and a giant silver fir tree just way up inside it. And it's glowing and it has roots sunk into the ground that go off in light patterns down below this landmass. And you can see the trunk of the tree is radiating a white light with a gold nest that's flowing through it. And it's coming down the branches out, each needle on that tree, a little beam is darting down from it and it connects to some place in the lower dimensions. This is referred to as the tree of life. And there's identical one to it, much larger, many planes up from here. Off to the left, after you exit that surrounding circular marble floor, you see another clearing with beautiful small plants and it's kind of like a botanical paradise and flowers and in the middle of it, is a tall, thin, wivery white dome like a silo for grain. And inside it, you see people doing something. They're being tested, standing on a blue disc platform, three semicircular white marble seats, and some beings are watching, and they're holding up this giant sword. They are an Atma with an energy body that looks physical here, and it's passing a test to hold this giant sword, this twin sword of truth up effortlessly. And then we're gonna go out to the end of that roadway and you'll see many training centers off to the left and right. There's 144 roadways extending from the base of that marble floor out to the beach all the way around it. And there are training centers along each of them, a dozen six on each side and out at the end you find yourself hovering above this white luminous beach that circles this whole land mass when you look behind you you see this blue green water kind of bluish and it looks a little darker than the air but it's really not water it's energy and you find you have a physical body with bare feet the atma hovering above it the real you and this energy form is feeling its feet sink into this white luminous sand and a cooling and warming energy is coming up your legs, up the top of your head, right into the white core of your being running that energy form that looks like you 
and it's making you brighter. It's getting a charge here. And you find all of us as a group and all three concentric circles of beings from the Galactic Alliance are moving out into the distance of this blue field of light that surrounds it, this floating landmass. And as we get away from it, you can see there are amethyst looking crystals, short, perfectly formed, that go down to one big point at the bottom. And they're all sending energy down them. And then you see this landmass as big as it is recede into the distance until it vanishes. And we are floating in this special blue energy, which is designed to help people recall who they are as the Atma and how to run bodies without being trapped in them. When you breathe in, you can feel this energy pass through the spherical orb of your being and pass through it the other way. You are in direct communication with source energy here. It inspires us to create only that which will be of uplifting benefit to all life in the grand multidimensional creation. This is our purpose. And then you see this landmass approaching again as if we're moving towards it at tremendous speed. And we move up and over it and hover above these six snow-covered mountain peaks. Down the bottom of the valley between them is a white island. There's a blue pedestal, rectangular, made of like blue lapis lazuli, blue stone with a gold sheen to it, gold running through it, polished. And there's a cobalt transparent blue sphere about four feet wide hovering above it. And there's a radiant blue star in the center of it. In the next instant, you find yourself, oh, and surrounding that island is a blue green lake, luminous, and the six mountain peaks. Find yourself suddenly moving downward towards this cobalt blue sphere. You pass right through it and find yourself hovering around this blue star in a huge void of cobalt blue light. There's this blue star and it whirls and forms into Torellia. And they were still circled around him and he points downward and you see this shaft of light appear. Only this time the tunnel at the other end opens up to the earth you're familiar with, the polar ice caps and the moon. And in the next instant, you find yourself hovering around Torelli and myself, Perry and others, as Atmos, above the planet, looking at the polar ice caps. There's a parallel dimension on Earth, three levels up, that has a different world, Earth, that looks different. And you're gonna see it change now. And then you see that it has no polar ice caps. And the moon has atmosphere, no polar ice caps, lakes and rivers and five domed cities with golden sided quartz capped pyramids in each one. People walking out in the countryside, outside and inside the domes. And as this moon, which turns on its axis, reveals the backside, on its journey around the earth, you see two large dome cities in the higher mountainous region. Down on the landmass, you see a large continent centered over the equator from the left to the right hemisphere. About a third of the way up, right in the center of the planet, about a third below the upper pole, it curves and goes down to the right hemisphere, and then it does the same on the bottom. And so it stops about a third of the way to the south pole and continues to the left. On the other side of the planet is a continent two thirds its size. Down at the bottom, above the southern pole, on the land, you see a crescent-shaped emerald green beach glowing from space. You see the word Lemuria appear in golden letters across the landmass, then it turns into M-U and vanishes. Then you see the word Atla or Atlantis on the other side. This is a planet Earth, mind you, that never had its poles flip. It is a protected parallel dimension out of 144, it's the third one up from the world you're used to. And it's been governed by and monitored by the Seres and master teachers and a protected reality for eons. They can come and go freely from there. So can certain Galactic Alliance members in craft or out of their bodies. You're gonna find yourself suddenly feeling your feet sink into that emerald green sand on that beach. You can see a crescent shape going around this. 
how would you do that? Yeah, like this. And the back is a brown moss covered path that goes straight back several miles between tall jungle trees. You can feel your feet sinking in this glowing emerald green sand and it feels soothing and cool at the same time. Goes up your body, up your torso, looks to be about 36, up through the top of your head. You look up smiling and see it enter the white core of your being as the app hovering there. Both are you. It goes through the white core and plugs itself into the green layer and starts turning on some of the teardrops. This energy is a gift. It's about recall and remembering who you are before you found yourself on earth with no memory and little to no use of your higher faculties intact. Then you look out at the ocean. And you see that Torellian is standing up to his knees in the ocean water, 18 feet tall, doing the two thumbs up thing, smiling, quirky kind of smile. This is just reinforcing us to have the courage to go forward. And then you look inland and you hover above this beach with all of us. Torellian points out that there is a snow capped mountain, one solitary mountain, just to the right of a big clear crystal dome with three big golden-sided quartz cap pyramids, a lake, little white pathways, and little ivory-colored dome dwellings, and a long, elongated ivory-colored dome at the base between the three pyramids and, tri pyramids and triangular formation, which is laboratories for conducting ways to make this world and this moon be prototypes for how the Earth and our moon will change. Our moon and Earth are not destined to stay like they are. They've been working here for a very long time. And as you move over the top of the jungle towards this mountain, you look down and see this brown moss covered path stops at a white marble clearing. There's a statue of a woman standing on a, a pedestal. She's 10 feet tall. Her hands are out to his side with glowing green light around them. And you get the impression that that light coming from this device, this statue, is charging that sand that went up your spine and into the white core of your being to help you recall. And when you look closely at this woman, she has two big angel-like wings behind her out of polished quartz, pure and perfect. She's not an angel. She is a member of a race from a world on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy called Zeantranamus. That's the race from planet Zeantranamus 1. And that when you look at the statue, you see that she has what appears to be inside the crystalline form, actual beings standing there with long, glistening silver hair like silver metal and violet eyes with little pointed ears, not like Spock, but pointed like an elf, but not so drastic. She has a golden band around her forehead and a teardrop-shaped faceted emerald stone radiant in the center. And you can see her move back inside this crystalline form until you see her standing with her feet, bare feet, in a green atmosphere. This is an interdimensional doorway. And the next instant, you find yourself with Torellian and all of us and 2,500 other Galactic Alliance members and teachers hovering in this green atmosphere around this woman. Then you see a man appear beside her, a little taller, and he's holding up his hands. The fingers are longer than people on earth, the toes, the neck, elegant and beautiful, but not humans on earth. And there's glowing with gold light around, or green light around them as well. And they tell you telepathically that their world is four times bigger than earth, has three moons circling it, and three suns. One is a blue giant, one is a, red, a yellow sun like our medium sized star soul, and one is a blue uh, red dwarf. So it's a trinary system. There are no polarized caps on their worlds, many little oceans and lots of land and dome cities. And they tell you that the bodies you're seeing standing there, you look above, you see these beautiful radiant atmas above them, on their world look like this. And they are three and a half million years old, unaged. This is one form of immortalization. To do this, the beings have to know who they are that is not a physical body. 
in the next instant, you can always give gratitude to them and ask them to teach you when you're out of your body at night, if you wish. Find yourself above this snow-capped mountain, above this angel statue, looking down at this dome city at a lower plateau, and you look up the side of this mountain off to the right, and you see a waterfall cascading out of a cavern opening, tumbling thousands of feet down a cliff face. It is blue green and radiant. There's a phosphorescent mineral of some kind that's luminous within it. It's dropping down, beginning a river that runs through a blue green forest that surrounds the backside of this dome city created by the Galactic Alliance, the Say Rays, and some very advanced master teachers. Up above that cavern is another caverning, a lighted tunnel, oval, and there are little semi spirit domed white lights trailing away down into this tunnel in the interior of the mountain. That is an interdimensional doorway created to link this mountain, which is an extinct volcano, on this continent of Lemuria that never flips its poles, on an earth that never flipped its poles. And it goes as you trap through it. It transforms the energy you are, atma and or ship, down to a little bit lower frequency so that it comes out in a cavern carved out of the interior of Mount Shasta in Northern California. It is an extraterrestrial, very highly evolved base. It is not penetratable by any force on Earth. And it is manned by kind, wondrous beings, and it was put there in 1908. And it is because of such beings that nuclear war has been prevented on our planet. Or we'd all be dead right now. So I will share that with you. Suddenly find yourself hovering above this planet where you can see the Lemurian Atlantean colonies, still named that. And then look out at the moon and see it full of life and oxygen turning on its axis and the sun in the distance. And then you see it transform into the earth you're familiar with, with polar ice caps and a barren moon. Then you find yourself hovering above your physical body as the atma, sending a little green beam of energy down into the pineal gland, into your brain, lighting up brain cells out through your skull. And you're bringing carefully this entire experience as a memory and downloading it into the human body and brain that never had such ever put in it. That energy will move through you. And then behind that green energy, you see a white light with a golden essence supporting it, passing through you, whirling around it. And it moves past you for your benefit and out into the earth planet and out into space for the benefit of all life. When you're ready, open your eyes. Maybe stop at the Lemuria parallel dimension and masks. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the kind of thing that beings have the ability to do when they begin to recover awareness of it. Even if they grew up on Earth with no training whatsoever, because they carry it suppressed in the atma that they are itself. So this is what we're working on doing. This was a very long journey, a very long recording. A lot got accomplished during this time period couple hours. That's a lot of work. It's not easy. So I have to put my body in the trance state called sleep in order to talk with you and guide it. I'm the Atma running it from wherever we go to maintain that so that other people can get benefit from that and have something to see because they don't remember what the Atma plane or the Hugh Expansion Ray Academy looks like. Heck, it didn't even exist in the upper worlds past about eight Earth years ago. So they're going and getting established in these different realities and planets to know what they look like so they can go back there on their own through the hue. I want to leave everybody with that. Wish them pleasant. Uh, I, yeah, I like the audience to know that Stan is still traveling. That's <laughs> full on journey for, for See, people to understand that he goes with us. Yeah, the phenomenon is that he'll pick up on a phone call, a radio show with Perry or Gail or anybody else I do. And he'll come in and meow out the door. He'll get up on this chair and he'll go out of his body and go join Etta and wait for all of us to get out of our bodies and go do it. He's very, very adept at it. It's no effort for him. And he's a cat on earth. 
What's running the whole body and is telepathic and so intelligent to know how to do this is an atma just like me or you. He knows it. He's a dear friend. So, you know, he's still going to go back and play with that, I think, for a while because he's teaching him how to fly, levitate his body. He's doing all kinds of stuff. It's kind of fun. A lot of fun to watch. So I'll stop the recording now to bring an end to it and we can chat a bit. Thank you very much for today. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you.